Hi everyone, and welcome to week 20. In this week's episode, I'm gonna cover some tips and tricks when you're using the Combinator to create either effects or splits and layers, or even pattern-based song starters. Now, even though the Combinator was introduced in Reason version three, I still come across a lot of artists and producers that are confused by what it is and how to use it properly. And I hope that this video can help those of you who are still struggling with it just a bit. So let's get into it. Before we get right into some tips and tricks, let's cover some Combinator basics. The Combinator is a device which can contain an unlimited amount of devices, which can include effects devices, synthesizers, mixers, really anything that exists in Reason and Record, except of course for another Combinator, or in the case of Record, mixed channels or audio tracks. You can assign the four rotary knobs and buttons and the pitch and mod wheels on the Combinator to control parameters or settings of the devices which are contained inside, even multiple parameters with just one knob or button. If used as an instrument type of device, you can set up things like keyboard and velocity splits and layers using the programmer section and changing the parameters in the key mapping section. Assigning the knobs and buttons is done using the modulation routing matrix, which is right over here. If you have ever tinkered around with the modulation matrix of the Thor synthesizer, well, this section is going to look pretty familiar. For this week's episode, we're going to create an instrument patch with a bass sound on the left hand, a pad sound on the right hand, and a drum pattern playing back from a redrum, which can be turned on and off and has selectable patterns. The first thing I do when I'm creating any Combinator patch that will contain multiple devices is create a mixer. If I only plan on using a few devices, I'll use a 6x2 line mixer. If I think that it's going to be a lot of devices, then I'll use a 14x2 mixer, or several linked together. This is actually a really important step, since the Combinator only has a stereo output and input, and as soon as you create one device without a mixer, it will auto-route to those jacks and any additional devices you create, you wouldn't hear. Make sure that you click inside the Combinator right here before you start creating devices. Otherwise, they'll be created outside of the Combinator. We're going to start by creating a subtractor, a Thor, and a redrum, and select some preset patches for those devices. If I were to play my controller keyboard right now, you can hear that all three of those devices are being triggered, which is not really what we want. What we want is a subtractor bass sound to be on the left-hand side of the keyboard and to stop playing at the B key just below middle C, and then the pad sound to be on the right-hand side of the keyboard from middle C up. To do this, make sure to press the Show Programmer button so you can see the key mapping section. Now select the subtractor in the device section on the left, and change the key range high to B2. And then select the Thor and set its key range low to C3. Now we have the split between the bass and the pad sound. But the redrum is still being triggered all across the keyboard. And all we want to do is have it play back patterns. To disable the redrum device from receiving any notes, we just select it over here and check off the Receive Notes button on the left right here. This is useful for any situation in a patch when you want to use a device for something other than notes being played. For example, maybe using a Maelstrom for its LFOs rather than its sounds. I'll go over how we are going to use the redrum in a minute. All right, now let's assign some rotary knobs and buttons to modify some parameters. Just like when we assign the key range, to make any knob or button assignment, you need to select the device on the left first. For this patch, I want to use Rotary 1 to change the timbre of the bass sound. Specifically, I want it to increase the cutoff and decrease the resonance of the filter when I turn it to the right, and do the opposite when I turn it to the left, which is decrease the cutoff and increase resonance. In the modulation routing section, under Source, select Rotary 1 for the first and second slots. Under Target, select Filter Frequency for the first slot with a minimum of zero, and a maximum of 127. 
and filter res for the second slot, but this time select a minimum of 127 and a maximum of zero. That allows the knob to send inverted or opposite amounts with the same knob twist. Have a listen to what that sounds like when we play it. Let's label that knob so we know what it's going to control. If we wanted, we could even have this knob control the Thor sound by just selecting it on the left and repeating the process with knob one as the source. And in theory, just one knob could control multiple parameters on every device that is contained in a combinator, which offers you a lot of control with just one knob twist. Let's have knob two control some parameters of the Thor patch so we can tweak that sound quickly as well. To make it easy, I'm just going to have rotary knob 2 of the combinator control one of the rotary knobs that's on the Thor by selecting it as the target as you see here. And again, we're going to label it. Now on to the redrum. As you can see when we press play on the transport bar, the redrum will play the current pattern just like it would if it were not in a combinator. If we wanted to just play the pattern without playing the song, then we would just press the Run Pattern Devices button on the combinator over here. I've already programmed in a few pattern variations for this redrum, and would like to be able to select them from the front panel as well as mute a couple of drum parts using the buttons. Let's assign Rotary Knob 3 of the combinator to be our pattern select. Choose Selected Pattern as the target. Since I only have four different pattern variations here, I will be using a minimum value of negative one and a maximum of three. For your reference, negative one is pattern off, which means no pattern will play back. Zero represents the first pattern, slot A1. And counting up four from there gives us a value of three for the fourth pattern. Yeah, I know it can get a little confusing, but bear with me. Now, as you can see, when I turn the knob, the selected pattern changes. Again, label that knob. The last thing we will do is assign some of the buttons to mute the kick and snare of the drum pattern. Select drum one mute, which is my kick drum in this pattern, as the target for button three, and drum two mute, which is my snare drum, as the target for button four, and label them as such. And finally, we have a combinator patch, which has bass on the left, pad on the right, some selectable drum patterns that we can play along to, and some knobs and buttons, which will help us to modify or change the pattern a bit. Next week, I'm gonna cover how to use the combinator to create some multi-effects patches, and also how you can use the rotary modulation CV inputs on the back to come up with some patches that have a sort of ghost in the machine type effect to them, which means that there is some level of automatic parameter change that's happening in the sound. Well, that's it for this week. Again, I'm James Bernard from Propellerhead Software, and I will see you all in a week. Bye.